Hi, uh, I'm Amber Countryman. I'm an artist based in the Rockhampton region. Um, and in order for me to tell you about my arts practice, I kind of need to tell you the story of how I became an artist and how I've evolved since. Now, it does start off a little bit depressing, um, but it does get much, much better. Um, so hang in with me. <laughs> The beginnings of me becoming an artist uh, started when I was an at-home mum. I have uh, two children. I have one with um, a disability and a medical condition and the other with a um, behavioural diagnosis. Um, when my daughter was born, before I could even take her home from hospital for the first time, she already had two surgeries, one on her spine and one on her brain. Um, here she is here. Uh, she's a happy 10 year old now, so it's all good. Um, but for five years there, my life was, uh, I was in survival mode. It was not fun. It was an existence. And I went through divorce as well. And look, eventually I started to get a handle on things and I had a little bit of time here and there. And I'd started creating things and I started decorating my home. And the feeling that I was left with after that creating was such a contrast to the rest of my life that I just kept going back. I wanted to feel good more and more and I kept going back to create art. And uh, that is how I became an artist. It was, it was art therapy basically is, is how it all happened for me. Last year I wanted to kind of talk about that experience of uh, being thrown into this world of disabilities and um, birth defects and the whole medical world and what that was like for me. Um, so I've started creating, um, this is going to be a medical chart but from the mother's perspective. Um, it's really a birth and rebirth story. This is the birth of my daughter and this is the rebirth of me as a person. You become somebody new. Uh, so this is how it started actually, the 20 week ultrasound. I thought I was coming out with some pretty pictures and I come out with a whole new life. So that's how it started. Now this is all painted in coffee and wine. Um, I chose those because of the, the likeness to blood, but also um, Coffee, alcohol and caffeine are things you stay away from when you're pregnant. You do all the right things, you're supposed to get the, the right result at the end. It, they're also forms of self-medicating as well. So I really wanted the materials that I used to be part of this story. I wanted to put big words in there because big words, uh, they're this new language that you have to learn. You're talking to all these medical professionals and it's so confusing. So when I people look through this art book. I want them to be confused. I want them to be shocked at the blood splatters. I want them to feel those things as they turn the pages because that's how it felt from my point of view. So, and you know, the anguish, is my child gonna be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life? At the time, it's the worst thing in the world. Uh, believe me, it's not, there's, there's worse than that. But um, yeah, you know, th this is, it's unfinished, because you have to be in a certain place to create art like this. And at the moment, life is good. I'm not going back to finish this artwork just yet. So we'll put that aside. I've learned how to paint. I've learned how to use different materials and how to incorporate into that story. Um, and I'll just put this back in the drawer. And when I'm ready, then that's when I'll finish that artwork. Back when I discovered this feeling that art gave me, I started creating using things that were around the home. Uh, I'm quite frugal as a person, but also environmental. So, um, you know, I started using discarded materials and making art out of those things and actually ended up being an environmental artist for about five years. I did um, mainly public art um, and installations and I did actually quite well as an environmental artist. Um, my art's been seen by tens of thousands of people around the country. Uh, I've had a lot of great feedback and a lot of media attention. And I was driven, you know, I was purposeful and I was out there to make the world a better place. You know, that was my purpose. So um, I'm proud of that. But then last year happened and last year was uh, not so good. 
So last year changed my arts practice. Um, I had a, a few events happen in my life that I needed to deal with emotionally. I had, I was offered two huge professional opportunities and lost them. Uh, there was family trauma, personal relationships. My daughter got sick and I thought that I might lose her and that stuff affects you. And as the year progressed, I noticed that my art was being informed by my emotions and my experiences rather than my environmental concerns. Uh, I needed to process those emotions. I needed to get them out of me and I needed to feel good again. Um, so that's kind of how things have evolved for me since last year. And look, admittedly, I have been a little lost with purpose in that way because I was so driven and I had this purpose and then everything changed. This is the kind of art that I started creating uh, in that time and um, with the personal relationships and the things that had happened, uh, you know what it's like when you feel like people are treating you poorly and that's how I was feeling at the time as well and uh, I wanted to express that and get that out in a piece of artwork so I had to work out how to do that. So I felt like a doormat and so a doormat came to mind and so that's how the uh, form of this sculpture came about and the fetal position. Uh, this is a self-portrait. This is me curled up. This is me protecting myself. This is me hiding from those people who were treating me like that. Um, and, and then I wanted, I wanted it to stop and I wanted people to stop walking over me and I wanted them to know that. So how do you then portray that in an artwork? So then I started thinking about walking and, and, and trip wires and booby traps and, and things like that. So I, I wanted a, a deterrent there for people to stop walking over me. I'm sick of this. So that's where the trip wire came in and these spikes. It's a deterrent. You can't walk over Amber Countryman anymore. So this is kind of, this was my first wood carving and I was rather impressed with myself being able to actually do it and get the outcome that I was after. So this is kind of, um, this was where those emotions and those feelings started coming out in art. As I started creating these new artworks, I started sharing them on social media. I was nervous about it uh, and I didn't share all the details in the beginning because these were my emotions and my uh, personal experiences. And who cares, right? Like, what was the point of this? So then after a little while, I reminded myself of a playgroup that I used to attend when my kids were little. Um, every mother at that playgroup had a child with special needs or disabilities. It was not your average playgroup, believe me. And occasionally we would get the chance to sit and chat and share what was going on in our lives and fall apart and cry and all those things together. And in those conversations, through the sharing and the, just the, oh, it was an experience. And uh, it gave us all strength. We all left those sessions uh, able to cope with what we had to deal with at home. It's not a normal life that we lead. So it just gave strength. And, and those, remembering those playgroup sessions with those women, that's informing my art today. And that's informing the value that I place on sharing. So I feel like, you know, what I'm doing here is the sharing I've received the benefit of that. So um, this is my purpose now. This sculpture is called Gift and I made this one after my daughter's little medical adventure uh, last year. It's made from tissues and glue. So tissues obviously represent the emotions and the tears that come from you know, little medical adventures that we have that are a regular part of our life. And uh, boxing gloves, uh, because you have to fight. Like you have to fight 
every time you go to the hospital, every time something happens and you know something's wrong and you aren't being listened to, you have to fight your whole life to make sure that you and your kids have a quality of life. You want to be happy, you know, even though you have these ups and downs. So that's what the boxing gloves are for. And this is your child's diagnosis. Everything changes once this arrives. There's no going back after that. So that's really important too. But it is a gift. This stuff is a gift. Like I said, I, my life has changed. And seriously, my life has changed for the better. Um, we're a very happy family. We have a really... Uh, full happy life and that's uh, gratitude has got a lot to do with that and I think uh, we really value our good times you know because we have the bad times there and that's the balance of life so before all this happened I didn't realize that you know mundane that was that was how it was now no nah, life is wonderful you know and and I appreciate it so that's the gift When I post my artworks on social media, I usually write a bit of an explanation to go with them. Um, sometimes there's a hidden meaning in there. Sometimes I leave it quite general and just leave room for people to make up their own um, connection to the artwork. But whatever I do write, it's important for me to write and, and get it out of me in the hope that it's also going to help someone else. Um, and I don't always find that bit out. but. I do get messages from people and I do get people uh, pull me up in public and tell me what a particular artwork or a particular written piece has meant to them and how they related to it. So I do feel like what I'm doing has worth and um, at this point in my life I'm just trying to do what feels right and this feels right to me and this feels like my direction. So private tea ceremony, this painting is actually painted with tea. So uh, straight away you have the relationship between the materials and the meaning of the painting as well. So private tea ceremony, it's about that sacred little ceremony with yourself, loving yourself basically. This is about personal growth and about loving and appreciating who you are. As a young person, low self-esteem was my biggest problem and I held myself back from so many things in life. And it's only, yeah, I'm 40 now. <laughs> it's taken a while to get to this point. Um, and it's through having my children and having to do, go through all those experiences, deal with all those medical professionals, having to stand up for what I believed in along the way. I was forced to do that and I'm grateful for that. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, as I'm sure we all aren't, but I'm okay with that these days. You don't have to like me, I'm fine with that. I'm building self-esteem, obviously, you can hear that, and I'm developing strength, and the strength is about the personal growth and the uh, resilience to go on and deal with all the ups and downs that are guaranteed to keep coming in life. So this is this can be very general and very relevant to a lot of people in their own way. So that's private tea ceremony. This sculpture was about some pretty intense feelings, not anger, but very close to. Uh, I had done well enough to be offered some huge opportunities as an artist. And then I lost them through, um, you know, reasons that were nothing to do with me. And that hurt, you know, like, I, you know, I really wanted those opportunities and I wanted what came after them. They were going to be like these platforms to leap off and I lost all of that as well. So I was, yeah, I was not in a good place at that point because I was so driven and, you know, on that mission. So I felt like that donkey who, you know, gets tricked to walk down the path with the carrot dangling in front of his face on the string and the stick never gets the carrot, does he? So um, feeling like the sucker I did, I grabbed the stick and I snapped it over my knee and I've just bundled all this stuff up together and I've returned to sender. And um, clearly I wasn't going to use real carrots for this, so all the materials got an upgrade to make this uh, something that could be displayed as an artwork. 
um, in a gallery or somewhere like that. So the carrots are made from uh, clay, paper clay. The sticks are actually dowel that I've carved and the string is a silk string. And as I was making these and I was bundling them up, um, some of them broke. There's a few little bits of carrot that have snapped off and I thought, you know what? I'm frustrated at the moment and I'm doing this really tightly and I'm not being gentle. And in a way, I think that shows when you have broken bits there and I just do not care because that is actually part of the feeling that was um, coming from this artwork. This sculpture really worked for me um, to be able to process that, those, you know, really horrible <laughs> feelings. Um, you know that trick where when you're feeling terrible and you write everything down on a piece of paper and you burn it or you turn it into a paper aeroplane and you fly it away and you instantly feel better, that's what this kind of art does for me. It just allows me to kind of express it and get it out of my body, process it and then feel good again. So um, there's that therapy in action again. So that's what art does for me. Art is not about play for me. It's not about looking pretty. It's not about money. It's about overcoming and then sharing in the hope that, you know, you're going to make a difference somewhere down the track. So this sculpture came about after that rough patch that I had. So this is about direction. This is a positive sculpture, um, onwards and upwards, clearly. Um, and these, uh, the writing's actually crushed eggshells that I've embedded in there. And I think that's because, you know, you come out of these rough patches and you see the light again, you know, and you start smiling again and it's, you change. Every rough patch you change and I'm not going to be careful anymore. So I'm going to stomp on those eggshells. I'm going to crush them. It's not about being gentle. It's about, you know, going up onwards and upwards and, and this is my direction, this is trajectory and that's where I'm going. So this is a really positive, positive sculpture from, from after that, all that rough stuff that happened. So this is on your way, you know, get on with it. So as I've kind of explained, my inspiration for my art comes from emotions felt or experiences. Uh, sometimes it's a conversation, sometimes it's a point I want to make but I don't want to voice it verbally. Um, and I really enjoy uh, feeling that emotion and then working out how to then turn that into an artwork and what materials can I use to be part of the story? What form is it going to take? What structure is going to be involved? Is it 2D even? You know, so I really enjoy that problem solving and the challenge that comes through uh, creating sculptures that I create. This one here started as a Christmas holiday activity actually. I was, my kids were with their dad for a little while and uh, I wanted to make something, anything. I didn't know, I didn't really want to get emotionally involved but my brain wanted a problem to solve, my hands wanted something to do. And I had these old phone books lying around and I had a hat box in there. So I, I sketched out an outline of a shape and I just started twisting and gluing and twisting and gluing. And this is hours of work in this thing and there's lots of paper and lots of glue, it's quite heavy. Um, it was very telling actually how much I need to create. And so I kind of learnt a lot about myself with this sculpture, just that, I guess that need for art that I have now that I, I didn't realise before. And uh, so I've called it Dial a Therapist because phone books, it was therapy, that's just the way it is. Uh, and then I've actually painted it in a fiberglass resin because I wanted it to have that durability because uh, I wanted it to have a lifespan as a sculpture but also I wanted it to appear, appear as if it has durability and resilience because that's what comes from doing the things you love. And whatever form of therapy yours is, it, it makes you healthy, it gives you a longer life, doesn't it? So clearly my art does not exist to be beautiful. Uh, sometimes it happens, but it's in addition. So uh, I want to go beyond the surface and the meaning or the message is so much more important to me than aesthetics. And that's just who I am as a person as well as an artist.
Being an artist has helped me appreciate my differences. As I said, I've never felt like I fit in anywhere. Um, but as an artist now, I understand that that's actually a good thing. That's actually something to be valued. So these days, I actually feel comfortable being myself and only myself. So that's massive as a person to finally get to that point in your life. This um, is another self-portrait. This is called The Overthinker. Uh, and this is inspired by a conversation, but of course inspired by August Roden's The Thinker, you know, The, the Thinker. So um, apparently I'm an overthinker and apparently I have a very active brain and I get told this quite a bit. Um, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so um, I'm always questioning and processing things and analysing things and people and situations and whatever. I see it as a strength. So this is my normal arm here, but I've kept quite a robust muscly arm on this side like the original sculpture because I see overthinking as a strength. Um, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You've got to use your brain. And just a hot tip for anyone out there who's going to tell an overthinker not to think about something. As soon as you do that, they're going to start questioning why you don't want them to think about that. So that's a little bit of a backfire, I have to say. So, um, yeah, overthinking is a strength. Just keep it positive. see I'm primarily a sculptor but I don't stick to specific materials because it depends on that individual artwork and uh, the meaning that I want to draw out of those materials for that artwork. So as a consequence quite a lot of what I do I've never done before so every new sculpture, sculpture can be an experiment. I actually find that very stimulating as an artist. I am a problem solver and I really like that uh, the thinking that goes around um, every individual artwork. I uh, get a real sense of accomplishment and I get really excited. And this is even before I've started the creating bit. So um, I love it and I get a lot of stimulation from being an artist. One last sculpture. Uh, this is Birds on Fire. This was uh, a response to the bushfires uh, that we all experienced here in Australia last year, this year. I wasn't directly affected, thank goodness. Uh, a lot of people I know were. Um, I did find myself unable to read the news reports on the wildlife and what was happening there. That was just, it just got too much and I just couldn't take that on board. Uh, I did want to do something with it though and um, this was a tribute that I created. I had a piece of blue gum from my pop shed. Blue gum is the favourite food tree of koalas. So it just seemed fitting to create that. And I've made a feather because, you know, even the, the ones who could fly were still perished. So what, what hope did all the other animals have? It was heartbreaking, isn't it, really? So anyway, I've uh, created this feather in the shape of flames and I've torched the edges of these flames with actual fire. Uh, and if I sell this and I've made five smaller ones as well for cheaper prices, <laughs> if I sell them I'm going to donate that money to um, our local wildlife charities here because I feel like I want to do a little bit to help with that. So yeah, that's kind of my contribution I guess. So there's a look at my art practice and I hope you got something out of it and thank you for listening. <laughs>